Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I have a longer video than normal. It's New Year's Eve and I thought that I'd make something that you guys can relax to and also share my thought process from start to finish. I saw these images of colorful buildings. They're so intricate and I thought that they have so much character to them so I wanted to create my own as a pen doodle with a simple watercolor wash. I looked at a few pictures and saved the ones which caught my attention, maybe from their colors or the shape of the building, especially the different roof types. Here are the photos that I have chosen. Before I begin to paint, I usually like to look at pictures and collect the ones that I like. You don't have to like the whole picture, but more or less the features that you find interesting or you would like to include in your composition. By the end of this, you can find a bunch of different pictures that you can combine together with your own vision and ideas in your artwork. So let's go over the pictures that I've combined together one by one. For this one, I really like the building in the middle, I quite like the roof and the cute balconies. I also like the top of the buildings for this one, I find that they're so intricate and I also like the composition where the building in the middle is the tallest and I like that there's a bit of space on the sides. For this picture, I like the fun colors and I also like the fun shapes like the curved roofs. I like the colors more in this one though, I like the mix of muted pastel colors in contrast to the stronger saturated colors and I also like the simple windows because I don't want every building to have too much intricate features so it's not too busy for your eyes. So here are the sketches that I've made after looking at those buildings. I first looked at the composition and I tried to also figure out which sketchbook I want to use depending on the framing that I want. On the left, I initially thought that I wanted to paint on a double page spread on my A6 book, but later I figured that the longer composition would look nicer, which is why I ended up choosing my square book to paint on. I also drew on the composition where the buildings are full on the left to right versus the one with space on both sides or smaller houses. Notice how simple my sketches are because I don't want to waste too much time to erase and redraw the details. The sketches or thumbnails should only serve the purpose of figuring out the composition for now. The next thing I did is to figure out which rooftops I would like to include. There were so many that I really liked so I had to narrow it down in order for me to feature them in the limited space that I have. I also tried numbering them to figure out where I'd like to place them, but these are just plans and when I do the pencil sketch later, this could also change. This part of the process is basically just to declutter my mind and try to put things in place when and if I don't have a clear image in my mind yet before I start painting. I started out by drawing a line to figure out the space at the bottom and to also figure out how high the buildings will be in comparison to the frame that I have. Then I started sketching out the buildings one by one. I'm not thinking about the details for now, just the basic outline and the design of the roof or the top of the building. There aren't actually that many steps to this and it's actually quite simple to do but this took me around 3 hours to complete from planning to painting because there were just a lot of buildings that I included in my composition and there are also going to be a lot of repetition especially when I'm drawing out the windows at the end. At first, I thought about skipping through it so the video won't take this long, but I know that a lot of you enjoy watching the process and it's the last video of the year so I thought might as well. At some point, especially when I'm drawing the windows later, there's just going to be a lot of music and not that much talking. So I hope that is not going to be too boring for you guys. Here I'm also trying to map out the height of the rooftop design that I have chosen. The lines are not yet clear because just like before, I'm still going to move things around so I don't want to waste too much time cleaning lines and adding detail at this point. I wanted to draw out the buildings with random heights for this sketch because I still haven't made up my mind yet and this is why the left building at the moment is quite tall. But after drawing the sketch, I can see that I prefer the building on the left and the right to be a bit shorter so I'm going to fix the one on the left and it won't take too long because I didn't spend too much time on it. 
Once you're happy with your composition, you can clean up the lines if you need to. It doesn't have to be completely clean as long as you can visualize where the correct outline should be. I know I can work with what I have here so I'm just going to outline it and I'm only outlining the top part of the building that I've drawn out and leaving out the sides with pencil first. As I'm outlining the roofs, I like to add a bit of detail at the same time. I like to double the lines to make it look more detailed with the trims and edges. If you can't do this straight with pen, you can also include this in your pencil sketch. But if you don't need it, you can keep the pencil sketch to a minimum and then add on the details as you outline it like what I'm doing here. Sometimes I like to even make corrections if after looking at the composition again, even if I'm in the middle of outlining. In this case, I find that the roof is too tall so I decided to shorten it by changing the angle. Just like before, you can do this with pencil first before outlining. But if you already have a clear image in your mind, you can draw it straight with pen. Here I also decided to add the window feature at the top because I already knew what I would like to add. But again, you can always use pencil first even if you have an image but you're unsure of the outline. As an example, I find that the roof on the left here is actually really boring so I wanted to add another layer and I also want to play with curves just like the building from the reference. But you'll see that because I still wasn't sure specifically what to design and I know that I can't draw curves that well, I'm playing it safe by sketching it out with pencil first before outlining it with pen. Once I'm done, I'm just going to erase the pencil marks for the rooftops. Then I'm going to sketch out the building flooring section as well as the windows. I didn't want the sides to be outlined yet with pen. That's because I haven't figured out the sections. And since I want to create trimmings to protrude out slightly to make it less flat, I avoided outlining the sides so they won't get in the way of the details that I'm drawing out here. For the windows, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm not going to draw out the trimmings and do too much details for the frames. I just want to map out the sections and figure out how to divide the spacing. However, for certain buildings, if I want to follow the reference image for the shape of the window or the balconies, I'll just make sure to draw it on with pencil first so I remember the basic shapes. For most of them though, I'm just going to keep them mostly square because I don't want every single building to look too busy. You might be wondering why I separated the pen outline of the rooftops and the windows and the reason why I'm doing this is because personally for me at this point, I didn't have a clear image in my mind yet so I decided to break down the process and lock down the features that I already knew about which were the design of the rooftops. Sure, I could have done them at the same time with pencil first, but because I wasn't sure about the windows, I didn't want to make major mistakes and erase a large area and then accidentally erasing the roofs that I was already sure about. So to avoid that, I lock it in with pen. So even if I need to make big changes to how I space out the windows or I didn't like the design of the balcony, I eliminate the risk of accidentally erasing the roof design as well. A lot of the steps that I take is according to how I need to break down a drawing or painting at the given time. So this depends on my experience or lack of. And none of these steps are exactly necessary. You don't have to follow them exactly, but these are just sort of tips and tricks that I do to eliminate the amount of risks or accidents for my own personal needs and this can be different for everyone so whenever i tell you certain steps yes they're my process but it doesn't mean that it's the only way and you can always find your own process that you're comfortable working with to suit your level or to suit the supplies that you might have at the given time
After I finished mapping out the windows, now I have a clearer visualization of the finished painting. I felt like the sides were too empty and I like the reference where even if you can see the main buildings, the smaller buildings around the sides help frame the main tall buildings. So I decided to add trees on either side. This can be just tree branches if you'd like them to be completely dry, but I'm going to paint them later as trees. After I'm done, I'm going to outline the windows as I did the rooftops. I added the trims and the frame straight with pen, but if that's not too comfortable for you to do, you can always draw the details out with pencil first, or you can even break down the steps further by locking in the space and the shapes of the windows with pen, and then draw out the window design with pencil first before outlining it with pen, just like what I did with how I separated the rooftops and the windows of the buildings. So just like what I mentioned before, this is going to take a while and I'm just going to put on background music and you guys can just relax to it if you want or skip through if you can't be bothered watching the lines being made one by one. <laughs>
Once I'm done with the pen outline, I'm going to erase all the pencil marks to make sure that I have clean areas to paint on. I'm only going to do simple washes for this and you can pick any color combinations you want but here are the colors that I'll be using for mine. Starting from the left, this is Burnt Sienna by Holbein followed with Sepia by Holbein Yellow Ochre by Roman Schmal Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith Jean Brilliant by Holbein Rose Matter by Holbein Compost Blue by Holbein and Indigo by Schmincke. I'm going to begin by using Yellow Ochre to paint a light wash for the tree. I'm using a light consistency and then adding a slightly thicker one to paint on dots so the distribution of paint is a bit uneven. Then I'm going to repeat this for the tree on the right as well. The reason why I'm painting the trees first is so I know which areas to avoid later when I'm painting the buildings next to the trees. For this first building, I made a pink from Rose Matter with John Brilliant and I'm just going to color in the whole building by avoiding the windows and trimmings as well as that little area with the tree. I'm just doing a light wash and not being too overly careful if I've left a little bit of white space or if I accidentally go over the line because the outline is already clear enough to see the shapes. This is basically going to be the same for all the buildings so I'll just name the color mixtures that I used in case any of you would like to create the same color combination. For the next one, I want it to be a creamy yellow color, so I used a mixture of Jean Brilliant with the yellow ochre to make sure that the yellow is not too overly bright. I want the next building to be a blue color, so I used a mixture of compost blue with a tiny bit of Sean Brilliant to make sure that the blue is a little bit muted so it suits the color palette. For the next building, I'm going to add yellow ochre to the previous blue mix and I'm also going to mix up indigo with yellow ochre. This darker mix is going to be for the roof since it's visible on this building and I'm going to use the grayish green color for the rest of this building. For this one, I used the roof color to add a little bit of shadow under the edges of the window to add a bit of depth. And this is something that you can also apply to other buildings as well by using a darker version of the building color if you want the added detail, but it's actually quite minor. Next, I want another light color next to the cool colored buildings that I just painted, but since I don't want them to be the same as the previous yellow, I used a mixture of yellow ochre with buff titanium this time to make the color a bit more yellow and less creamy so it's not exactly the same. For the next building, I want a bright red brick color, so for this I used a mixture of burnt sienna and rose matter. And I think that this color will make the composition pop out a little bit more since this color is much stronger than the ones that we've used previously. Thank you. 
For the rooftop on this building, I used the yellow mixture from earlier with a little bit of the red brick mixture of the building. For the last building, I want to create a very light blue-gray, so I used a mixture of indigo with buff titanium and I'm using a very very light consistency. For the trunk of the trees, I used a mix of sepia and burnt umber and I used a medium to thick consistency. Now I'm going to add the color of the window frames for some of the buildings. I'm starting with the last building and for this I used a mixture of indigo and yellow ochre. For this one I just used yellow ochre by itself but I still had a little bit of indigo left on my brush which is why the color is slightly different but that's completely up to you, you can add it on or just use yellow ochre itself. For this next one I used a mixture of indigo and yellow ochre just like what I used for the rooftop to create a dark green color. For this building, I wanted to keep it consistent with the blue, so I just used indigo for the window frames. You can have the windows completely white, but I'm going to tint mine with blue-gray, and for this I used a mixture of indigo and sepia, and I'm using a light to medium consistency, and this is completely up to you if you want the windows colored or not. Because the windows turn out quite dark for this one, I ended up using my white jelly roll pen to realign some of the windows, but I didn't think it was necessary in the end, so I didn't end up doing it for the rest of the buildings. From here, I'm just going to continue on painting the windows. I personally like to leave a bit of white space when I'm painting the windows so it doesn't look too bulky and the white can also suggest reflections. For the larger windows, sometimes I like to paint it diagonally to show the reflection since I am painting on a larger area, but I guess you can also do this for the smaller windows as well, but it does get quite tedious.
Lastly, I'm going to mix rose matter with sepia to paint the pavement outside of the buildings in a very light consistency. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of bushes on the left and right of the composition for added texture. For the bushes, I'm just going to draw it out with pen without painting it, so the focus is still on the colorful buildings. And after I finish the bushes, this is basically the completed ink drawing with a simple watercolor wash. I hope you guys still enjoyed this one despite it being a very long video. Like usual, all the tools I use in this video as well as my social media links will be listed in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you next year. Bye!